All right. So everybody asks me about workers, 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 workers. When do I push? When do I not? How much should I push? How much should I not? And uh, generally speaking, I have the old video on workers, but it's a little outdated and I figured it was kind of time for an update. And uh, I, I think you know, judging by what chance said and what everyone else has said, this I think is a good point. So generally most opens in Legion should allow for four workers, count them, one, two, three, four. Um, but that's not always the case. You know, three workers to five workers is kind of the, the good zone. Um, two worker opens, generally you're speaking, going to be pretty bad if you don't know what you're doing with them. Um, Egg is one of the ones that is a two worker open and can work out for you. Um, Sakura is another two worker open that can work, but you shouldn't be just dropping down 250 value with no general idea or reason behind it. So I think you should realistically look for openers that are more in the, like, like the 200 or less value range if you want to be pushing adequately as well as getting good value in the early game, right? So like a Nightmare, which is 185, is usually a pretty good opener. It's gonna allow for four workers guaranteed, five workers pretty commonly, depending on what you have to support it. Green Devil, if you receive Ascend on one, is almost always gonna be a five worker open. And it's gonna give you a really easy hold on one, two, and three. Generally going to be pretty nice as long as you have supporting units. Gate Guard is, by many people's accounts, a pretty safe five worker open. You're not going to leak very hard to a snail, but you're also going to have good value on again one, two, and three, so long as you have good supporting units, even with a leak on one. Bone Crusher is one of the few openers that you can traditionally go six workers and still hold a snail resend on two if you have the adequate units to support it. Oftentimes, it's going to be best with something like Cash Out, right? So, Keep in mind what units you have for openers dictates what you're able to do for opening worker push. Now this gets into, into like how you should actually utilize workers in the early game more often than not. You should never push to a no send. Generally, most people should never push to a no send. If you haven't received a send, they're probably going to leak you, which then in turn is bad. It's just you want to hold as much as you can at all times. Um, and then at the end of the day, the rule of thumb for when you receive sends in a normal game is 40 Mythium received, right? Let's say you get a Lizard, a, Dine, a DT, excuse me, a Snail, Double Snail, I should say, or two King Ups, right? 40 received. When you get 40 Mythium, you push one worker, right? That includes Mercenaries and King Ups, any combination of the two, right? If you receive 60 or 20, there is situations in which you can push two workers off of a 60 or a worker off a 20. You need to pay attention to your value though. The value down here in the bottom corner is going to be super important when it comes to how you're actually going to be able to push, right? So if you receive 60 and you go into the next wave, you have 50 gold extra and it's saying you're 70 over or 50 over, whatever it may be, you can push that extra worker. But... As always, you need to pay attention to how good your units are in the coming waves, et cetera, to be able to, you know, figure out what you're going, what's going on here, you know? So if you have, uh, let's say, Pyro or Flower and you're going into seven and eight, you may not want to push that extra worker because you're quite pissed on the next coming waves. Now, let's say you're sent a Dino, right? And you, you know, receive that 80, you leak 50%. At the end of the day, if you leak 50%, you may only want to push a single worker in that situation, right? Your leaks lose you gold. And if you're in a situation in which you're leaking hard from ascend, you need to be careful on how much you're pushing if you want to keep your value on point, right? At the end of the day, you can counteract that by, you know, pushing and sending next or, or however you want to go about it. But you should always check your value on the next coming wave to determine if you can again push that extra worker. Very similarly to pushing off of a 60 to two workers or 20 to a single worker, you need to check your value on the coming wave and make sure you have good value going into things to make sure you can push off that leak. And that's the case if, you know, you receive 120 or 200 send um, and, and you want to push hard, always check that value. The value is the most important thing here. Um, and now the other thing people often will do is a lot of new players don't send frequently enough. And if you're not sending frequently enough, you know, three plus waves, um, I would recommend stretching that 40 to one rule, maybe do a 50 or 60 to one. So if you're, you know, 
let's say you got to send on three and you sent three and now you're going to go six or seven and they sent you on four or five and they skip six, right? I might not push fully on five if I know I'm not going to go till seven because your value is going to be quite poor on six and seven and they can potentially do a undercut by sending before you or leak you as much, if not more on the same wave you send if they have the worker push to do so, right? Um, that's considered being in a starved state when you haven't sent for an extended period of time, your value will be lower and therefore your worker push should in turn be lower. Now, let's say you're in a fed state where you're sending every single wave and the opponent's sending every single wave. Now in those game states, realistically what you can do is you can push more than the 40 to one rule, right? So if, if you sent uh, 40 every single wave, the opponent sending you 40 every wave, and your value is gaining because you have a lot of income, you have a lot of mythium to be giving out, right? And you're in a situation in which you're racing workers with the opponent. In that spot, you might want to push more along the lines of a 30 to one or a 20 to one, right? So like, let's say you get a 60 on, on seven and you know, you're, I got a bunk, I've got, uh, I don't know, a ranger or whatever. And I'm really strong on, on eight. Maybe you push an extra worker there, right? Because you're still going to be above value because everyone's sending. And you're also in a situation in which you have the income to sustain more worker push. And so kind of keep in mind how the game is playing out, right? This comes into account in the late game as well as the early game. If it's a fed game or a starved game, that changes a lot of what's going on in the actual game state. And so everything I've said so far is generally accepted as the early game principles, right? So waves one to nine, one to 10, one to even 11. Roughly, you can get by with doing a 40 to 1, 50 to 1, 60 to 1, 20 to 1, whatever it may be, pushing workers harder in the early game. Now, when you get into late game guidelines, mid game guidelines, things change a little bit. So post wave 10, so going into 11, 12, 13, Mythium generation is increased by 7% per wave. So those 10 workers that you have on wave 10 are going to be producing more Mythium on 11, 12, 13, etc., meaning you don't need to push as much to realistically get the same amount of value out of a worker, as well as the enemy's worker push is going to be stronger as well. Theoretically, of course, their workers are still going to be 10, 11, 12, but they're going to be getting more Mythium because the Mythium generation is increased. So if you go into wave, say 13, for instance, and they send you 400, you hold the 400, you don't necessarily always want to push 10 workers off that 400. It might seem a little bit you know, counterintuitive because I just said, you know, 40 to one, 20 to one, 60 to one, whatever it may be. At this point in the game, you need to be paying attention to your value more. So if you're going into wave 13 and you're slightly below value, but you hold, you might want to push, you know, a handful of workers, five workers, whatever it may be, depending on the game state, and then check your value and determine, okay, I can push more because we're going to go for a kill shot on 15, whatever it may be, right? It really comes down to how long the save has been into you, right? So when you were last sent, as well as what the early game was like. So in this situation, let's say you've got a 400 on 13, but they saved from 9 to 13 to send that on you. That's a four-wave save, and relatively speaking, a pretty long save by that point in the game, right? At that point, they have saved for as, about a third of the game to send on to you, right? So you're not going to be pushing as aggressively because at that point, your income and your value are going to be lower because you haven't been able to push and send as frequently, nor have you received as much going into that portion of the game, right? So if they go nine to 13, you may only want to push three, five workers somewhere in that like region, right? But if they've sent you every wave one through 10, and then they sent you 11, skipped 12 and sent 13 on that 400, you might be able to get away with pushing more of the seven, eight, maybe nine or 10 workers, depending on the game state and your value going into it, right? As you get higher in ELO, people are gonna be able to send more frequently, pushing more heavily, allowing you to push more heavily in the mid game, you know, that nine to 13 ish region. Now, Again, it's always going to come down to that value. Your value is the most important thing, in my opinion, when it comes to how much you should work or push if you're new to the game. You're not going to understand necessarily how good Nightmare is on 13, how bad Green Devil is on 12, right? 
how good or bad gate guard is on 11 or 13, right? Because it's always going to depend on what's going on with your entire build, right? The synergies you have, etc. So you need to pay attention to that value marker because that's going to tell you what you're able to do in a lot of situations. At the end of the day, workers are the tools that allow you to put pressure on your enemy as well as giving you income and gold needed to hold their sends as well. So if you're not pushing enough or if you're pushing too much, you're going to hamper your value and potentially give the enemy an in back into the game if you're in the lead. Uh, value is what will win you games, but Mythium and income help you achieve that value to win said game. Um, you know, at the end of the day, disclaimer, if you suck, that's on you, not me. But, you know, at the end of the day, if anybody has questions on anything you see here, any questions on what worker pushes you should be doing um, in certain situations, always take screenshots or send me screenies in my Discord. And I'll try to diagnose uh, a little bit on what you could do differently or what you could do better. Um, as always, people are more than helpful in my chat, my Discord, the official Legion Discord. Um, take screenshots, ask questions. The only way to know for sure is to try and learn, right? Um, but if you don't care, and you don't want to care. I'm not sure why you're watching this video, but anyway, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.